Hi everyone, the purpose of this guide is to introduce new players to hunting. I will talk you through the types of weapons and ammunition you need to hunt, how to get the cash to buy and upgrade those weapons, and demonstrate how to upgrade your satchel and the locations of where to find the pelts that you need. I can't promise that upgrading your satchel could be done in 5 minutes, but it doesn't take that long as long as you know how to do it and where to find those 3 star pelts. If this guide helps you, please hit the like button and leave a comment. It's really nice to hear my advice is helping to make your experience on RDR2 better. You can also subscribe to receive notifications on my future RDR2 guides and other game playthroughs. The first thing I want to show you is what the rewards are for hunting. Stand at Pearson's provision table in camp and click on crafting upgrades. Pressing R3 here will bring up the recipe of what you need to create the item. There is a satchel for tonics, ingredients, kit, provisions, materials and valuables. And finally, the Legend of the East satchel. The Legends of the East satchel won't be available until you've obtained all the previous satchels. Satchels aren't the only thing that Pearson can make. He can also make cosmetic items for the rest of the camp. Scrolling through the rest of the menu will show you exactly what you need in order to make all those cosmetic upgrades. They're not mandatory, but they're sometimes they're nice to have, such as the rug on Arthur's uh, floor near his tent, a rug for John's tent, etc, etc. In order to activate Pearson's ability to craft, you need to do the following. Donate five animal carcasses to Pearson. Upgrade the medicine wagon twice. Upgrade the provision wagon twice. Donate three items to the tithing box. Donate $50 to the tithing box. Craft three recipes at the camp scout fire and purchase leatherworking tools. The tithing box and the ledger can be found next to Dutch's tent on these barrels. You can donate to the tithing box as soon as you hit chapter 2. However, you won't be able to access the ledger until after a certain mission is complete. The ledger is where you purchase the leatherworking tools and also all the upgrades for the medicine and the provisions wagon. You will get access to the ledger only after completing the mission Money Lending and Other Sins with Leopold Strauss. I also recommend doing this mission as well with Hosea called Exit Pursued by a Bruised Ego. This will give you access to the stables and ultimately a better horse. It'll also give you access to the campfire that you can create whilst out uh, in the open world, which will eventually lead to the ability to fast travel from anywhere. Fast travel is also purchased from the ledger when you have access to it. Now let's make some preparations for upgrading your satchels. This guide assumes you're starting out scratch from chapter 2 early on. If you follow everything I do in sequence, I will show you an efficient and timely way of upgrading your satchel. As we progress, I'll also give you tips and tricks on what weapons and ammunition to use. Starting with the Strauss mission first, visit Painted Sky. This deck is the nearest one to camp. Once completed, the other two are optional. After collecting the money from Mr. Robel, we're going to make one short stop on the way back to camp and visit the Sheriff's Office in Limpany. Inside the Sheriff's Office in Limpany, you'll find a loot box right next to the desk. Inside the loot box, you'll find one gold bar worth $500 and a crafting recipe. Make sure you close the loot box after. This creates a glitch where midway through the next chapter you'll be able to come back here and loot another gold bar. After looting the gold bar, head back to camp. You will then be prompted by the game to hand in the debt you just collected to the tithing box. The game will then prompt you to open the ledger and make one upgrade to the camp. You then just let the rest of the cutscene play out. Once back in control of Arthur, make your way back to the ledger and the tithing box. Click on contribute and give item. Now donate the gold bar and any other valuables. This will contribute to the overall camp fund. Make sure you read the descriptions of the items you're donating and try not to give anything that says it's for crafting. On the top right hand side of your screen you'll see two sums of money. The top sum is the camp funds and the bottom sum is your own personal funds. Once you finish donating you'll see the top sum go up. Now go back into the ledger by pressing square. 
Clicking R1 will enable you to go through each page separately and check what upgrades are available. The first thing we'll do is upgrade Dutch's tent. Upgrading Dutch's tent boosts morale and encourages other gang members to contribute to the camp funds. More importantly though, it gives us access to the next upgrade after this, which is fast travel. Go ahead now and click on next in line worth $260, which will upgrade Arthur's tent and give you fast travel. You can fast travel from Arthur's tent by using the map on the side of it, or you can fast travel out in the wilderness by creating a campfire. The last page of the ledger offers leather working tools. So you'll want to go ahead and purchase this. This is for $180. After this, it's up to you what you choose to upgrade. My advice would be to upgrade the medicine wagon and the provision wagon because this is all needed to enable Pierce to craft. If you run out of funds, don't worry. We can always come back at a later date and add more funds to it. Now we have fast travel, we can go anywhere on the map and then use the fast travel to get back to camp quickly. The next thing we need to do is actually buy guns. However, you've probably run out of money by this point. So the next thing I'm going to show you is a really easy money glitch. This location is situated somewhat near Emerald Ranch. It's in an old dilapidated building quite near the stables. Underneath this building you'll find a cellar. In the cellar will be some money hidden in a wall. Follow what I do here and retrieve the money from the wall. It's at this point you'll then want to save your game. Once saved, go back into the story menu and click on load instead and load the game you just saved. The game will load you back somewhere near the cellar. Now you just need to run back to the cellar. Don't run out of the area, run straight to the cellar, otherwise the glitch won't work. Climb into the cellar once again and do exactly what you did last time and loot the money out of the wall. Then do exactly what you did last time, save the game, then load it again and you'll reappear maybe somewhere else but still within the area of the cellar to run back to. It might be helpful to put a marker on the map where the cellar is so you know which direction to run to. You can do this glitch over and over and over again. Doesn't matter how long, as long as you don't run out of the area, you can keep doing it over and over again. I would say the minimum you need to get in this glitch is probably around six to seven hundred dollars. This will cover the cost of buying two guns and upgrading them. I know that it seems quite time consuming to do this glitch over and over again and keep reloading your game. Uh, I'm not sure how long it will take you, probably about a half an hour maybe or a bit more. It is really worth it though, giving this time to get in the money. It goes towards the grand master plan of being prepared for hunting. You might even have enough money left over to buy Arthur some nice snazzy clothes. The next thing you'll want to do is fast travel to Valentine. The gunsmith is found at the end of the street opposite the sheriff's office. Approach the gunsmith and browse the catalogue. These are the two guns you will want to purchase and upgrade for hunting. If you don't have a special edition of the game, the varmint rifle you see here, which is free for me, will cost you around $72. The varmint rifle is used for killing small animals like squirrels, rabbits and beavers. It uses special varmint rifle ammunition that can be purchased from the catalogue. The Springfield Rifle can be used to kill larger animals like deer, elk, cougar, panther, bison, etc. 
The best ammunition to use for killing animals using the Springfield rifle is high velocity ammunition. This ammunition can only be purchased through the catalogue. After clicking on buy, you'll be taken to a menu which will give you the option to upgrade your new rifle. Click on rifling and then buy the improved rifling. Buying improved sights won't make much difference but you will want to buy the medium scope. Improving the stock on the weapon is only a cosmetic change and doesn't improve the firing of the weapon. However, purchasing a wrap for the weapon will help to keep the guns cleaner for longer. The styles menu is all about cosmetic changes. If you have enough money, go ham and make your guns all golden if you wish. Don't forget to go ahead and get the correct ammunition, which is the varmint rifle ammunition and the high velocity ammunition. You will also want to go ahead and buy the upgraded bandola, the upgraded holster, and on the next page, the upgraded gun belt. Also make sure you're topped up with gun oil so that you can clean your guns on the go. You'll want to make the exact same changes to the varmint rifle. If you already have a Vimit rifle or the Springfield rifle, clicking on the firearms dealer and choosing customize will enable you to change and make upgrades to your guns. You can even make upgrades to your other weapons like the Cattleman revolver or any other sidearms you've got or even the carbine repeater or shotguns that you might have obtained further along the line. You can even customize the look of your hunting knife. Before leaving Valentine, stop in at the general store and buy some cover scent lotion, some predator bait and some herbivore bait. This can be found in the hunting section of the catalogue. We're now going to start travelling near to a town called Strawberry which is to the west side of your map. Set a waypoint to the location of where I'm standing right now. If you're still in Valentine, you won't necessarily see the stranger marker that I see on the map. This stranger marker will only be visible once you get a bit nearer. This stranger mission is for Albert Mason. It's the first of four of his missions. This will show the boys at the geographical society. Completing this mission now will give us access to the second Albert Mason in about three in-game days time. The second mission is what we need to get some valuable wolf pelts. Go ahead and complete the mission as normal, fetch Albert Mason's bag and return it to him. Whilst you're in the area, this is the perfect opportunity to get hold of a perfect raccoon pelt. You will need to use a varmint rifle in order to kill the raccoon. Either walk or ride around the area marked in red on the map. You can use binoculars to study the animal to check what star rating it is, or you can aim a weapon at it and study it by pressing R1 that way. As you can see on the map, we're very near a town called Strawberry. Feel free now to drop in on Strawberry and get Strawberry added to your fast travel map and have a look around. Once you've visited Strawberry, you should now be able to see this location on your map, which is a dam and a lake. Surrounding this lake are beavers. Make your way down to the river's edge like I'm doing. Be sure not to go anywhere else at this stage and stand exactly where I end up standing. Now is a good time to apply some of that cover scent lotion you just bought. There is a stony inlet just opposite from where Arthur is standing here that sometimes has two beavers on it. Dismount from your horse and make sure you have both a Springfield and the Varmint rifle. The Varmint rifle is what you'll be using to kill the beavers. For some reason I decided to run here, which is not a good idea because I think I scared the beavers away and they ran into the water. But usually this is the inlet where you will find at least one three star beaver. So when you arrive, make sure you don't do what I do. Crouch walk slowly to the area and see if the beavers are there. Luckily for me though, there are other areas around the lake which have beavers. So I get back on my horse and I travel across the dam to the other side of the lake. 
turning right at the end of the dam back towards the river's edge. Following the river's edge again, quietly and slowly, with your cover scent applied, you should come across some more beavers. As you can see here, clicking R1 enables you to study the animal. This will show if it's a 1, 2 or 3 star pelt. A 3 star animal will result in a perfect pelt, which is what you need. You need to try and make sure you get a headshot on the animal. You can then go ahead and skin it and stow the pelt on the back of your horse. Travelling further along the river's edge, you might even get lucky and get another three-star beaver. I even came across a three-star buck here, further along the river. Using high-velocity ammo, I managed to get this with a Springfield rifle as it ran away and got stuck on the tree. Be careful when shooting animals in water. They might sink to the bottom, making it impossible for you to skin. We're now here on the map. We're going to be travelling further up towards the legendary buck, which will be our next kill. Set a waypoint like I did to further up the map. The route will try and suggest you take the road. Try not to do this. Stick to the left of the stream. This is because we're now entering cougar country and we're going to avoid trying to get killed by the cougar. We do need a cougar pelt, but it's not as important right now. However, I will show you where the cougar spawn point is for later reference. Following the stream all the way up will get you to this point. This is where the cougar normally spawns. There's a log here by the edge of the stream. Going across to the other side of the stream, you could try putting some predator bait down and then running back across to the other side of the stream. This is what I do here. So if you want to follow, feel free. However, on this occasion, when I studied the cougar after luring it, it was only a two star. Often a good trick here is to save your game and then reload it and come back to the exact same spot to try and lure the cougar again. I did try and do this uh, about three or four times. Unfortunately, it only ever gave me a one or two star. So I gave up because my main reason for being here is to get the legendary buck. I will, however, revisit this area a little bit later in the guide to show you exactly how this works. So now on to the legendary buck. Make your way to the area indicated on the map. You can also see that I've marked the area where the cougar spawns with a marker. So if you haven't killed the cougar yet, just be mindful that it could be nearby and keep an eye out for it. This area is where I'm standing now and where you will find the first clue to get the legendary buck. The game will indicate in the top left hand corner when you're in the right area. You don't need to worry about ruining a pelt for a legendary animal. You could use a repeater and plant as many shots as you can in dead eye. However, my favoured ammo is the explosive rifle cartridges. You can make them even when you're sitting on the horse by going into the crafting menu like this. They are crafted using Rifle Express cartridges and animal fat. The cartridges are from the gunsmith and the animal fat is from killing animals such as geese and duck. The reason why I want you to get the legendary buck right now is because after you've killed it, you can go to the fence and ask the fence to craft a trinket for you. The trinket will act as a stats bonus and increase your chances of getting a perfect pelt. Don't worry about knowing where the fence is right now. We'll be unlocking that shortly and I'll show you exactly how to do it. As you can see here, I use my eagle eye to find the first clue and I then moved towards the first clue and clicked on it. Follow the highlighted trail to the next clue. You can use eagle eye again to remind yourself of the trail if you lose it. Make sure you have your chosen weapon on you for example, I have the Springfield rifle and I've also made sure that I've loaded the crafted ammo into the Springfield rifle. There will be about three clues to find. On the third one, Arthur will probably say something like, it's really near. Close. 
Arthur has now said he's getting close, so now's the time to get your gun ready and make sure you've got the right ammo. Continue following the highlighted path. Make sure you look ahead though between the trees because a white buck will suddenly appear and that is the legendary buck. Depending on what area of the buck you shoot, it might take a couple of shots to get it down, so be ready. Once it's dead, a yellow paw print will show up on your little mini map to the left, which indicates where exactly it fell. You can then go ahead and skin it just like any other animal. The game will tell you that you can sell the pelt to a trapper who can then craft it into a unique outfit. The black and white trapper icon also now shows up on your mini map, which indicates where the trapper is. You can go ahead and put the pelt on your horse. You can even put the carcass on your horse to sell to the trapper. However, the carcass isn't really necessary, but it helps because it's extra cash. If you die and respawn with animal pelts or carcasses on the back of your horse, they will disappear. For legendary pelts, it doesn't really matter because the game will automatically send your legendary pelt to the trapper for you. However, any normal perfect pelts or normal pelts or poor pelts, you will lose forever if you die. So my advice to you, if you don't want to lose your pelts, is to save your game on a regular basis. If you now look at your map, you can see that the game has placed the marker for the trapper on it. All you need to do now is make your way to the trapper. Remember, if you haven't killed the cougar, keep an eye out for it. Click on sell when you get to the trapper and the game will automatically show you everything that you can sell to him. Be careful though that you don't sell any pelts that are meant for Pearson. We had the beaver pelt that we killed earlier on the back of our horse. I also had the buck pelt that I killed as well. Unfortunately I forgot about that and accidentally sold it to the trapper. You can also see here that I sell the actual animal carcass of the legendary buck which is still on my horse to the trapper too for about $15. You can also buy other things like uh, bait and cover scent lotion, gun oil, tomahawks, uh, throwing knives, etc. If you go into the buy menu of the trapper, you'll also be able to browse all the outfits that he'll be able to make you from any pelts that you get hold of. With that done, we're going to do a little bit more exploring. Around the area, you'll also find squirrels, raccoons, bears, um, elks. You can also find boars and snakes. If you happen to come across a three-star boar, you do need that for, for Pearson, so feel free to go and get that right now. I don't happen to stumble across one in this instance. What I do do now, though, is travel a bit further up the map to try and get myself an elk. We need at least two elk pelts. You can only store one elk pelt on your horse at, at one time, so it's good just to get one out of the way now. Set a waypoint just above the W on the map. In this area, you're likely to come across a lot of pronghorn, but you're also likely to come across some packs of elks if you're lucky. If you're really unlucky, you might come across an event where there's a couple of wolves sitting there which you'll have to deal with before you can progress. I've spotted here that there are a pack of elks running about, so I move a bit further up. Just like with the beaver though, make sure you don't get too close and remember to splatter yourself with that cover scent lotion. I've now spotted my three star target elk. As you can see, I put the cover lotion on, dismount, leave the horse way back. I could at this stage put some bait down, but because they're standing still, I don't find it necessary to do so. Make sure you switch your ammo on your Springfield rifle as well, back to high velocity. As you can see here, I get a little bit too close and spook them. Elks are a little tricky to get down. You need to make sure you get a headshot or a neck shot. Even with a perfect headshot, you might actually just wound it. 
If that happens, don't panic and don't be tempted to put another shot in. Just watch where it runs and falls down. You might even have to approach it and actually press the kill button, which prompts Arthur to use his knife and kill the animal. As you can see here, I'm lining up the shot, but I'm moving a little bit more forward to make sure I get the perfect headshot in. Luckily, I kill the animal outright and there's a black paw print on the map which shows where it fell. You can then call your horse and stow it on the back. As you can see, you can only carry one of them. It's now time to head back to Horseshoe Overlook and hand in the pelts that we've just got to Pearson. Because we're currently in an area which has a hideout in it, we might need to move a little bit away in order to be able to set up camp and fast travel back. Once back in camp, you don't need to take the pelts off your horse. Just walk straight over to Pearson and then click on the donate button. The game will tell you if you're donating it for crafting, provisions or just for the funds. Whilst in camp, head over to the scout campfire which is located at the back of Arthur's tent. You can use this campfire for crafting. Even at the beginning of the game, you will have access to a certain number of recipes you can use to craft items. Other recipes are available in the open world by searching around, or visiting a fence and buying them straight off the fence. If you remember the list I showed you, identifying what you need to do in order to activate Pearson creating satchels, one of those requirements was to craft three different recipes at the scout fire. Going through the list of recipes you will see that you will be able to make ammunition, food, tonics, hunting baits and cover scent lotion and items for your horse. The tonics use herbs you gather from the open world. You can also use the herbs mint and thyme with big game meat to, f to craft food which gives Arthur yellow health cores and dead eye cores. After crafting the food or tonics you can choose to stow them in your satchel for later use. If you haven't already done so, craft at least three different items now at the scout campfire. Once that's all done, head back to your tent and choose the fast travel option to travel to Emerald Ranch. There is a mission here with Hosea which we're going to do shortly, however this area surrounding Emerald Ranch is ripe with deer and you need seven deer pelts to hand into Pearson so this is the ideal time to start looking for those deer pelts. There is also an area over near the stables where a lot of buck will be. You might be able to get your buck pelt from there too. Use the Springfield rifle with your velocity ammo in order to get down the deer and the bucks. You will usually come across groups of about three or four deer standing together. One of them will probably be a three star, which will give you a perfect pelt. As we did with the elk, it's better to make sure you've got your cover scent lotion on and dismount from your horse and approach them slowly. If necessary, change the angle of the direction you're approaching the deer in order to get a better shot. Whilst travelling around this area, I managed to get about three perfect deer pelts. My personal preference for hunting is to do it during the day. I find it easier to see the animals for some reason, but that's entirely up to you. It's now time to do another mission. This time it's with Hosea. It will open up a fence for you which is located at Emerald Ranch. The mission is called Spines of America. The mission introduces you to someone called Seamus. Seamus acts as a fence. It's kind of like a modern day pawn shop. You will be able to visit 
Seamus any time you like and sell him your valuables for money. You'll also be able to ask him to craft trinkets for you. Every time you kill a legendary animal, you will take something from it. For example, we just killed a legendary buck and you took its antlers from it. You will be able to sell the animal parts you took from the le legendary animals to Seamus. Seamus then crafts a trinket for you with various different stats on it. As I said before, the legendary buck trinket will enable you to have a higher chance of getting perfect pelts. There's nothing special here, just play through the mission as normal. Sometimes on this mission, as you're riding with Azea towards the house, you might come across a herd of bison. You could use this opportunity to actually kill a three-star bison whilst on the mission. As long as you don't die in the mission, you will get to keep the bison which is on the back of your horse afterwards. Unfortunately on this occasion, the bison weren't there for me. My advice here though is to choose the night option in order to play through the, the part of searching the house. Doing it at night makes it far easier to walk around the house undetected. Check out what's inside the chimney and make sure you also go upstairs for some more goodies in the cupboards. At the end of the mission you'll end up back at the ranch with Seamus. When Hosea offers for you to travel back to him to the camp, say no because we want to hang around and visit the fence. Nah, I'll catch up with you later. Once the mission is over, you should then be able to go and talk to Seamus. His icon is on the minimap as you can see here. Sometimes in game there is a glitch which shows that the fence icon on your map or the minimap is actually locked. If that happens for you, just save your game and reload it. As you can see here, I decide that because it's night time and Arthur deserved a little sleep, I'd ride away a little bit, have a sleep and then come back to the fence in the morning. Seamus is always standing to the right of this bar that you can see here. As well as selling valuables to Seamus, you can also sell him wagons by riding the wagon up to the barn. Go ahead now and ask Seamus to craft the buck antler trinket for you. If you look through all the other recipes for all the other trinkets, you'll notice that some of them need things like earrings or a gold necklace, etc. This is why I tell you to be careful when you donate to camp for the camp funds, because some of them could be used for crafting and you will need to give them to Seamus. You can buy other things from Seamus too, like recipes that although can be found in the open world, you can also buy them here. As you can see here, I'm now selling some of my valuables to Seamus. I'm being careful and not selling him right now any valuables that are for crafting. This is because they will be needed when you click on the crafting option for Seamus. Now the trinket has been crafted, it should help in the off chance that we miss a shot or we get it slightly wrong the game may increase the pelt to a three star this will also now make it easier for us to get a perfect squirrel pelt i tend to use the varmint rifle to get the squirrels because the only other alternative is to use a bow with small arrows and that is a nightmare to get a perfect pelt i'm now traveling north on the railroad track to an area where i know there are a lot of squirrels as you follow this railroad track, you might notice some deer. Check to see if they're three star and get them down with your Springfield. The area highlighted here on the map is still the railroad if you follow it up north. On either side of the railroad, you will find lots of deer, lots of squirrels and maybe some bulls. Stop near the signpost here. To the right of you there will be a house and near the house will be lots of squirrel and some boars behind it. If you get lucky by applying some cover scent lotion you might be able to walk up slowly towards the house and try and shoot as many squirrel as you can. They're really quick so you have to be really fast. 
Make sure you keep both your varmint rifle and your Springfield rifle as clean as you can and clean it often with gun oil. If you don't and you try and kill an animal with a dirty weapon, it will affect the pelt. As you can see here, I'm slowly making my way towards the house. There's some boar there, but there is also squirrels there, I promise you. They're just hidden within the trees, so it does make it really tricky to target them. If you're not successful with getting a squirrel here, or it's not a perfect pelt, don't worry, squirrels are absolutely everywhere. Whenever you're riding along a path, make sure you have your varmint rifle to hand and target any squirrels that you might see along the path. Trust me, you have to kill many squirrels in order to get that perfect pelt. As you're here, you might as well check out the house and go and have a look in there. You should find some small amounts of cash and some more cover scent lotion. When you exit the house, make sure you do it quietly and look around. You might see some more squirrels or a three-star deer waiting nearby the cabin. After this though, continue travelling north along the railroad. You might see some more squirrels or some deer and eventually if you carry on you'll hit a path that will take you to another location for a trapper. As you continue north up the path you will eventually pass a ledge on the right hand side where there might be a campfire. Be sure to check out the campfire. If the campfire is there go and have a look. Talk to the man and then skin the animal carcasses that are strung up behind him. The crossroads here will e either have lots of rabbits or lots of squirrels. Hopefully you'll be in luck and be able to catch some squirrels. You might also find some squirrels travelling further up and round the corner here. Yeah. Finally I spot a squirrel. As you can see, I'm trying to follow it and study it at the same time. This is possible on horseback. The squirrel I eventually spot is a three star. I get it down, but as I approach it, it shows it's now a two star. This means I didn't quite hit it correctly. However, because of the buck antler trinket, the game upgrades it to a perfect pelt. We're now going to start heading back to Emerald Ranch. As you can see, I managed to get another couple of deer along the way. We're now on the trail of the elusive herd of bison. The bison are usually found in the surrounding area of Twin Stack Pass. I usually have more luck searching near the oil fields. After riding around for a little while, I eventually come across them. They are in between Carmody Dell and the oil fields, just as I thought. Bison are usually quite easy to get down. They're slow moving, and even if you spook them, they don't run away too far. Get close enough to them at first in order to study them. Because they're a large animal, you will need your Springfield rifle and that high velocity ammo. Luckily for me, the first bison I study is actually a three star. Make sure you aim for the head. Now we've got the bison pelt and hopefully lots of deer pelt and maybe even a buck pelt and the squirrel pelt, we can now head back to camp. If you didn't manage to get the squirrel pelt at this stage, it might be advisable to actually take the slow route back to camp and see if you can get some squirrels along the way. Once back at camp, head straight for Pearson and hand in all those lovely pelts. It's time now to check to see if we can buy any satchels and also check on what pelts are left to get. They are all still locked so we can't buy them yet and that is because we need to go over to the ledger and upgrade the provisions wagon twice and also the medicine wagon twice. Whilst you're here near the tithing box, make sure you've also donated $50 to the tithing box and also those valuables. With that done, we go back to Pearson and get him to craft the tonic satchel, the provision satchel and the valuable satchel. My favourite look of all of them is actually the valuable satchel. We still need to get hold of a badger pelt, one more elk and a panther pelt one perfect boar pelt and one perfect iguana skin and finally for the legends of the east satchel we still need to get hold of a cougar pelt and a perfect wolf pelt
Whilst we're near Horseshoe Overlook, I want to show you a really easy way of getting a quick cougar pelt. Its location is found if you travel out of camp towards the river and go right, and it's on the other side of the burnt forest. Using the Springfield rifle, I found it easy to get a headshot on the cougar, save the man who was being attacked, and you've got a guaranteed three-star cougar pelt. This event only happens once, so if you've done it already, you won't get it to spawn again. On our next trip away from camp, we are now going to get the final elk pelt, do the next Albert Mason mission and then head towards Rig Station. Presuming you're still near camp, set your waypoint to the same place I have here in the map. Once you get to the waypoint, dismount your horse, get your Springfield rifle out and splatter yourself with cover scent lotion. On the map I've marked a cross. Usually there's an elk standing there grazing right by the water. If you get lucky it might be a three star. If it's not a three star there is a trick where you can ride back up the path towards the text that I've written where it says approach from this direction and then ride back again towards the waypoint. This should reset the animals in the area and you might end up getting a three star elk exactly where I've marked it on the map. If that doesn't work however, I've marked in yellow the entire area around Cattail Pond. Within this area you should find other elk and the chances of finding a three star elk. Watch out in this area as well because occasionally a moose will spawn. Sometimes it's a three star, if you're lucky. If the moose is there, it will usually be found on the path as it crosses over the river. This area is also the location of the legendary ram, but that's not important right now. We're after upgrading your satchels. Occasionally when you ride into the area, an event will be triggered where a grizzly bear will be found standing near the water. This is what happened to me when I arrived. However, I also spotted a three-star elk off in the distance and managed to get it tracked. The problem was the grizzly bear was standing in the way of the elk. With cover scent applied, I carefully made my way around the edge of the area where the grizzly bear was and tried to get as close to the elk as I could. I made sure I kept an eye on the grizzly bear to see if it had spotted me. I knew that as soon as I took a hit on the elk that the grizzly bear would probably hear it and if he didn't see me straight away he would definitely see me when I run across to go and get the pelt. As you can see it didn't die immediately but ran off but I left it there in the hope that it would eventually stop and be disabled by the shot. I then turned my attention straight away to the grizzly bear to see if it was going to attack me. I don't think it had but I didn't want to take the risk so I studied it, realised it was also a three star and got it down. With the grizzly bear down I could then go towards the elk. I had to use Arthur's knife in order to kill it so that I could skin it for its pelt. I know it's only a game but I absolutely hate doing that. After stowing the elk pelt on my horse I went over and skinned the grizzly bear. I of course didn't have room on my horse to stow the bear pelt, but the animal parts that you get from it are also really useful, like the big game meat. There is a way to carry more than one of these large pelts, and that means bringing on a spare horse, one that you've perhaps tamed from the wild, or one that you've stolen. You can whistle the spare horse and it will follow you anywhere, and you can stow any other pelts on its back. I didn't have a spare horse handy at the time so I just chose to ditch the bear pelt. It's now time to do the next Albert Mason mission. If you've slept a couple of times since doing the last mission you should now see it on your map and it's quite close by to the location of Cattail Pond. With your elk pelt safely stowed on your horse make your way to Albert Mason. Once you've arrived at the location Get your Springfield rifle off your horse and make sure it's clean. It's also a good idea to top yourself up with a Deadeye tonic. 
you will need to make sure you get some headshots on some of the wolves so if you're worried that you're not going to do that straight away I would save your game before you start the mission you will then be able to reload the game and start the mission again if you do mess up the reason why I want you to do this mission is because Albert Mason is asking Arthur to help him to take photographs of some wolves. Because the wolves are spawned within a mission, there's a very high chance they're going to be three star wolves. Coming prepared into the mission with your Springfield rifle should almost guarantee you get at least one or two of the wolves. You still need to make sure you get headshots on the wolves. So once you go into Deadeye, if you don't get a headshot, come out of Deadeye, go back into Deadeye and redo the shot again. I will skip ahead now to show you exactly what happened when I did it. If you time it right, the first shot should be easy because the wolf will be standing still and you can aim right at its head. Because you can't tag targets at the moment with Deadeye, sometimes it is difficult to get a headshot. And as you can see here, I'm coming in and out of Deadeye and making sure I only hit the shot once I know I've got a headshot. Once the mission is finished, there's usually at least three wolves left, although a couple of the ones that you did shoot mysteriously disappear. You can go ahead and start skinning. In total, after this mission, I managed to get four three-star wolf pelts. With that done, it's time to make a quick pit stop back at Horseshoe Overlook to hand in to Pearson the pelts that we've just got, before heading straight back out to Rig Station. In total, Pearson needs three perfect wolf pelts one for a satchel and two for creating a nice rug for your fellow gang members to sit on near the fire. So now we just need to get a badger pelt, a panther pelt, a boar pelt, although you might have already got a boar pelt if you managed to get one, and an iguana pelt. With those handed in, set your waypoint now to rig station. Rig station is probably the best place to find a badger pelt. If you arrive here and it's still daytime, find somewhere to camp and sleep till nighttime. The badgers in the area will usually be running up and down the pathway marked in red on the map. You do need to be a bit patient with this one. Sometimes they don't show up straight away. If that's the case, then just keep riding around. Maybe try riding out of the area a little bit and come back. Eventually they will appear. What I usually do just before I arrive here and set up camp and make sure it's night time is save my game. I can then reload my game if I struggle to find a three star badger. Yep. With that being said, let's see how I get on. As you can see, what I'm doing is activating Eagle Eye. I'll run around the area and keep activating it and check the trails. If you haven't already studied a badger, it will probably come up as an unknown animal. Badgers have a unique sound. It's a bit like a hissing sound and it's quite similar to a skunk. There are also skunks in this area as well. I managed to find my first badger and get to study it. As you can see it's only a two star. So I carry on circling around the area because I know a three star badger will soon turn up. Bear in mind I have speeded up the process here and you may be circling around for a while and you might have to reload your game back to the start of the night time in order for a three star badger to show up. You can visually recognize a badger because their coat is full white. Okay. 
what I'm going to do now is set up camp and sleep till morning and then I'm going to head straight back to strawberry and the surrounding areas of strawberry which is proper hunting country I will show you a really good method of getting a three-star cougar and I'll also get a boar pelt for myself and I'll also show you around the area and show you the different types of animals that you can find there I've now fast traveled back to Strawberry in order to visit the hunting grounds of Big Valley whilst I'm here I'll show you a really good method for getting a three-star cougar using predator bait I've also marked on the map here all the various different types of animals you can find in Big Valley I'm now traveling from Strawberry past the lake where we got the beavers and traveling towards the cougar spawn point when you get to this point remember that you need to cross over the stream and go to the left hand side of it this is so you can avoid the possibility of a cougar spawning near the water and getting you without you realizing make your way up further to where the road bends to the right staying on the left hand of the stream when you get near the logs dismount and make sure you've got the Springfield rifle to hand at this point also save your game now you've saved the game you will be able to reload it if the cougar you eventually lure isn't a three star carefully walk to the other side of the stream and put predator bait along the bank Once the bait is down, run back across the stream as fast as you can. Stand a little further back behind the rock. Get your Springfield ready. Use eagle eye if necessary to look for the cougar that comes from the left. As you can see here, I didn't even need eagle eye. The cougar was really quick and comes up. However, it's only a one star. That means I'll need to reload the game in the hope that the next one will be a three star check the map make sure you know exactly where you're going and head back to the left hand side of the stream exactly where you were before I run across the stream again put the predator bait down and run quickly back across to the rock however in all the excitement I've forgotten to take the Springfield rifle off my horse so I need to quickly run back to the horse and get the Springfield rifle I needn't have worried though because this one too is a one star so back I go to reloading the game again this time I finally get lucky and it's a three star cougar don't be too hasty in trying to shoot it from afar the cougar will slowly make its way towards the smell of the bait give yourself plenty of time to watch it as it travels near to you you can then line up your shot make sure it's a headshot and go for the kill I'm not certain here after going into Deadeye whether I got a headshot so I come out of Deadeye and go back into it and try and line up another headshot you can use this method of reloading the game for any area where you know there's a known spawn point of an animal or bird that you're trying to kill with the cougar now down you can happily travel around this area to gather up any other animal pelts that you need including that boar pelt that you might need and maybe even the squirrels here's a reminder of the map that I made it lists most of the animals that are in the area there are birds as well but these are the, just the animals that you can get pelts from it's now time to head back to Horseshoe Overlook to hand in the pelts that we've just got. With the badger pelt now handed in to Pearson, we can craft the ingredient satchel. Not many to go now, we just need that panther pelt and the iguana pelt and maybe a couple of deer pelts. We just need one final trip out of camp. Sleep till morning at camp and then make your way to Valentine. Head to the train station in Valentine and take a train to Rhodes. If this is the very first time you've taken a train, 
Don't worry about your horse, it'll follow behind the train and meet you at your destination. Once you arrive at Rhodes, get out of the train and find your horse. Rhodes has a general store, so it's a good idea to stop off at the store and buy some more supplies. Rhodes also has its own fence which you might want to utilise whilst you're here. If you've never been to Rhodes before, the map will be undiscovered, but we need to travel down the map in order to find the location of the panther. This is a view of the map with the area uncovered. We need to get to the panther spawn point. So set a waypoint roughly in the same place I have. Then you can just start to follow the path. If you've taken the correct route, it should take you through a wrecked old Civil War location called Bulger Glade and an abandoned church with a few Lemoyne Raiders inside it. The route shouldn't take you too close to the church with the Lemoyne Raiders in, so there will be no chance that they might spot you and start to attack you. As you get closer to the spawn point, you'll be inside a wooded area. I tend to veer off to the left at this point to avoid the crossroads where the panther actually spawns. We have now arrived at the panther spawn point. The panther lives in the woods right behind the crossroads here. We're going to use predator bait in order to lure the panther. Make sure you save your game at this stage. This is on the off chance that either the panther won't come along after you've laid the bait or it's a two or one star and not a three star. Make sure your horse isn't too close to the crossroads and get your Springfield rifle. I usually have more success with this method if it's first thing in the morning. An event also gets triggered sometimes when you're standing next to these rocks where a woman is being kidnapped on the back of a horse. This might bring the panther out prematurely, so if that happens, it might be best to reload your game. The same goes if you see a woman asking for your help because she's fallen off her horse. She's actually going to try and rob you, but she might disturb the panther, so it might be a good idea to also reload if that happens. There are two sets of rocks here, one that Arthur is standing next to, which he'll use to stand and wait for the panther. The other set of rocks is on the opposite side of the crossroads where we're going to lay the bait down. Just like we did with the cougar, walk over to the other side where the rocks are and put down some predator bait. After that's done, quickly turn round and run back to the other rocks. I usually then climb on top of the rocks and turn to face the woods. Using Eagle Eye, I then keep an eye out for the panther. I usually give this about 5 or 10 minutes in real time to look for the panther to see if it's lured. If it hasn't appeared in that time, it's likely the panther might be too far away from the bait in order to be lured. So you could consider at this point then reloading your game. I waited about 10 minutes, but then I spotted an Appaloosa horse within the trees telling me that the chances are the panther wasn't anywhere near because if the panther was near the horse wouldn't be near. With that spotted I decided not to waste any more time and reloaded my game. If you do reload your game you'll probably end up where I do. Just run through the water back to the rocks rather than running along the path. This will reduce the risk of the panther smelling you and coming for you before you're ready. Now you're back to the rocks and the crossroads, you can repeat the process again. Reloading seemed to do the trick. As I got on the rock, I turned round and immediately saw the panther coming towards me. I realised it hadn't spotted me yet, so I patiently waited and studied it using R1. It was a three star, so I went into Deadeye and got a headshot on it. The event I mentioned earlier with the kidnapped woman is just triggered behind me but I really don't care at this stage, I'm more bothered about skinning my panther. At this point the only thing left for me to get is an iguana pelt and also two deer pelt. Taking a look at the uncovered map, we can see that the iguanas 
are based on an island opposite Clemens Point. The pink marker on the map shows where you should stand to get across to the island. So we need to try and find a way to get to this area. If you're like me and you don't have the area uncovered yet, we're going to have to make a guess at where to set our waypoint. I'm also deliberately riding along the path towards Catfish Jackson's in order to show you that this is also another area where you might get badger pelts if you haven't already got one. However, in my experience, I've only ever seen one or two star badgers here. There's also wild boars here as well, if you still need a boar pelt. The waypoint I've set here is actually going to take me alongside the lake. This is probably the easiest way of finding Clemens Cove if you haven't got the map uncovered. However, it will take you into the grounds of Braithwaite Manor and you need to be on the lookout for guards who might try and attack you. Once you get to this point, you're on the final straight and you're almost at Clemens Cove. Keep the lake to your left and keep pushing forward. You can see the islands that we need to get to on the left as well. I'm now arriving at Clemens Point. Just past Clemens Point is the area where I want to stop and it's the narrowest point you can get across the lake in order to get to the islands. From Clemens Point, just keep following and keep the lake to your left. You should know when you've got to the right spot because usually when you get here, there are two canoes waiting for you or at least one. We've now arrived at the right spot in order to get across to the island. You can either ride your horse across or you can take a canoe. If you choose to ride your horse across and it's not level 4 bonded, make sure you give its stamina a boost by giving it a tonic. Then either ride the horse or row the canoe over to the nearest island. If your horse starts losing stamina, press R3 to calm it and this should boost its stamina as well. Now you've arrived on the first island, make sure you've got your varmint rifle out. The iguanas aren't actually on the first island, they're on the second one. So move to the end of this first island facing the second one. Here's the map as a reminder. We are just above the red circle at the top of the map. When you start crossing the water to the second island, look ahead and you should see at least two iguanas. Try and study them before you even arrive on the island. Unfortunately, the one I killed wasn't a three star. However, because I've studied it now, I should find it easier to locate three star iguanas. There are plenty more iguanas on this particular island, so we just need to keep circling around the island to try and find one. While circling the island, you'll probably come across this pirate boat. Hop inside it for some pirate treasure and a pirate hat. The pirate hat must have given me some luck, because just after I got it, I spotted a three-star iguana just ahead of me. The next thing I do isn't mandatory for the satchel upgrade, but as you're in the area, it might be worthwhile you doing it as well. If you keep travelling across the islands, the very last island has a trinket on it.
With that done, we should be able to make all the satchels and finally the Legends of the East satchel. The easiest way to get back to the mainland is actually to make a campfire. The game will automatically move you back to the mainland. If you have all the pelts, including all the deer pelts, you can easily now fast travel straight back to Horseshoe Overlook. I still have two deer pelts to get, so I take the long route back and hope that I'll come across two three-star deers on the way. I take a route back towards Emerald Ranch because I know this area is full of three-star deer. I've left this footage in to show you that it's very possible, even on horseback, to use Deadeye and get an animal down with a headshot. In a later mission, you will get the ability to actually tag a target on its head. However, prior to the mission, which is to rob a train with John, you won't be able to do that. Therefore, prior to that mission, the only way of securing a headshot is to go in and out of Deadeye until you hit the right spot. It takes a little bit of practice of coming in and out of Deadeye and trying to get your shot lined up with the head, but it does become easier in time. I've now got all the deer pelts that I need, so it's time to head back to Horseshoe Overlook. One last check in with Pearson to hand in the pelt. And finally, we can now make the last two satchels, the kit satchel and the material satchel. With those two done, it then allows us to make the Legends of the East satchel. Well, do me nice. As you can see here, the Legends of the East satchel allows you to carry 99 of any item. And from this point on, life in the game will be so much easier when you're not having to run to the fence every five minutes. If you found this guide useful, please consider subscribing so you can receive notifications on future guides and gameplay walkthroughs. Hit the like button and use the comment section to ask questions or let me know how you got on. I would love to hear from you.